a baseball field. You heard that right, a baseball field. They want to move dozens of graves of Civil War veterans, World War veterans, Korea veterans, Native Americans, and babies. Hey everybody, this is Colonel Carson with Family Tree Nuts, and I'm in Hoskins Cemetery in the Island Creek community of Clay County, Kentucky. Hoskins Cemetery is a cemetery like so many others in Appalachia, up a dirt road and on the side of a hill. Family Tree Nuts was contacted by several people that were feeling helpless about this situation and asked for our help. We of course decided to get involved and help out with the atrocities that are happening here. By the way, if you like these types of videos, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and click that little bell so you get notifications as to when we post new videos. The cemetery sits on land that is owned by the Clay County Board of Education. It overlooks the football field of Clay County High School. We are told that the high school does not have their own baseball field and the team currently plays at a local park. The families of those buried here first learned about the situation in a notice that was published in the local newspaper, the Manchester Enterprise. It stated that the Clay County Board of Education intends to petition the Clay County Fiscal Court for permission to relocate the graves to another cemetery called the Manchester Memorial Gardens. The petition is to be filed 60 days from the publication of this notice. You can see these little flags all over the cemetery, and it's obvious that a survey has been made. Many of the families are outraged. They say the thing that makes them most angry is how everything's just so hush-hush. They say they have contacted the school board, but they continue to get the runaround. And there's been a few school board employees that have insisted on remaining nameless, that have said that they heard that the intention of the land is to build a baseball field or maybe even a parking lot. But either way, it's supposed to be used for athletic facilities. They want to remove the final resting place of so many ancestors for a baseball field. Is there not any other place to put a baseball field somewhere here in this community? Many of you will be shocked that among the graves to be moved are the graves of Native Americans. Buried here is John Fox Sizemore, son of Henry Hunting Shirt Sizemore. The Sizemore's Native American ancestry is well documented and DNA proven. They belong to the Southeastern Kentucky Sapani Nation. Many Native American cultures believe that the disruption of the body of the deceased may prevent the spirit from moving into the afterlife. How is this even being considered at all? James Quiet Wolf Sizemore, chief of the Southeastern Kentucky Sapani Nation, has issued the following statement on the matter. To whom it concerns, I am letting everyone know of my objection to the plans of removing the buried at Hoskins Cemetery Graveyard in the Island Creek community in Clay County, Kentucky. The Sizemores have been proven without a doubt that they are Native American Indians by both DNA tests and other records. The removal of these people will result in the desecration of sacred Native American Indian burial grounds prohibited by federal and state law. Any such action also shows great disrespect for the Native Americans and their descendants, as well as disrespect for the U.S. soldiers that fought and died for this great country and their surviving families. We cannot as a people allow this to go forward. I urge all veterans and their families, as well as the Native American Indian families, to add their voice to stopping this terrible act of total disrespect. Respectfully, James Quiet Wolf Sizemore, Hereditary and Elected Chief of the Southeastern Kentucky Sapani Nation. There are some other people of interest buried here as well, and we have a few people that are going to help tell us their stories. All right, we've got a special guest with us here that's actually a descendant of some people that's buried here. You want to go ahead and introduce yourself and tell them who you are? My name is Gordon Miller, and uh, my grandfather, John Asher, and, and uh, Winnie Asher, they're my great-grandfather, and uh, they're buried here. And John's sister, Winnie Asher, she's buried here. Then he's got another sister married into the Hoskins family, which I got a great-aunt and uncle with them, and they've got five children that's buried here. So. 
I would really like for them to leave the graves here. I, my mother always taught me as a child when we went to church and to Sunday school and stuff, when they buried somebody, that's their resting place till Jesus comes back. So, you know, that's what I was always taught. And I believe they should leave them here, you know. They have all kinds of room over to the left. They could put a big ball field if they want one, but I, I think they should just leave the graves alone. Let them rest in peace. I'm glad you said that. You brought up an interesting topic because I guarantee you that there's many people out there that are going to say they're not here anyway. What, what does it matter? You know, they're up in heaven, you know, kind of thing. They're with the Lord. They're not here in this ground. What does it matter if we move those people? But I think it's much bigger than that, don't you? I think it is too. You're supposed to have the respect for the dead, you know, respect for the dead. Like all these soldiers, they fought for our country, for our freedom. So we're, where we're at today, we got freedom for them. It's not right to dig them, their bodies up, you know, and take them somewhere else. I don't think it's, it's all wrong. Yeah. How does it make you feel? How, what, what, what are your thoughts and feelings about this? Like when you heard about this, what, what did you think about it? I said, oh, this really can't be happening. I don't think, uh, you know, I just thought it was kind of like a, like a nightmare. You know, I didn't think it would really be happening, but it's really, really happening, you know. And I just learned through it by accident. Somebody told me I didn't, they said it was in the paper, but I never buy a paper. I'll just be honest about that part. But I don't think they should move the graves, I mean. Did, did uh, have you contacted the uh, school board and asked them what's going on here? No, my sister has. I've never talked to nobody at the school board. And the, yeah, your sister talked to them and, yeah, uh, you know, yeah. that she, I guess nobody knows anything, right? Oh, they kind of give her a rough way to go on the phone for a little bit, but other than that, that's all I know about it, so. I mean, there's obviously something going on with all these flags and stuff oh, like yeah, that. Oh yeah, they so. got them all flagged off and they're surveyed, looks like, and looks like they're getting ready to remove all these uh, bones and stuff in the ground. They're going to remove them. They've each got a number and they've got a name that's on there of, of the grave that's on there. So it's obviously happening. So Mr. Miller, who, who are these people that are right here that? John Asher, that's my, my grandpa's brother. Your uncle. He's my great grandfather. And Winnie, she's my great grandmother. Who were these people? They, they're not just a name and a date. No, I can Th remember. These are people. What, tell me about them just a little bit. Well, see, John was, he, he was, he was buried before I was born, but Winnie, I was born in 1953, and she she died in 58, and, and I can remember her being at my mother's and stuff when I was a small child. A few times, it's kind of like a dream, but I do remember the old woman and stuff. Right. And she, she was my grandmother, and I love her, you know. And somewhere, someplace, many of us believe that somewhere, someplace, they're hoping that you fight for them. Yeah, yeah. They're hoping that you fight for their final resting. Yeah. They chose to be buried here for a reason, not somewhere else. That's right. You got to stand up for what's right. Well, Mr. Miller, thank you for coming on here and being with us. Is there anything else you'd like to say? Well, that's about it, and I appreciate you. Yes, I, sir. Thank you. We appreciate it. All right. Our next guest here has some wide information about some people that are of great importance to this cemetery. Do you want to tell them who you are? Angela Hacker native of Clay County, Kentucky. Okay, you're native, and you've got people that are buried here as well. Yes, Kind yes. of thing. And uh, you're one of the folks that reached out, and you know some great stories about these people. Who are we at the graveside of? This is the grave of my distant cousin, Robert Burns. He passed away in May, 1897. He is the son of Andrew Jackson Burns and Nancy Baker Burns. An interesting fact note about him, his brother was Reverend Hugh Burns, who was the father of a well-known man by the name of James Anderson Burns, who was a founder of Oneida Baptist Institute. Oneida Baptist, yeah, that's OBI. A very popular. Tell us, what, what is, what is Oneida Baptist? The people watching don't have any idea what that is, but... It began as a uh, small school. He wanted to stop the feuding in Clay County, so we would. he'd like to start a school. They, you know, they don't have any feuds school. here in Clay County. Not anymore. Not anymore. Like they, but they never had any though at all, right? Yes, in years past. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think there's a few famous ones yes. that uh, we're familiar with. And so. they, he began the Oneida Baptist Institute, which is still a school today. Yeah, I think they Christian bring kids school. from all over the world. Absolutely, okay. global. Uh, all over the world to go to yeah. school. And it's right here in Clay County? Yes, in the Oneida area. Okay, so County. his father was one of the people that helped start that, is what no, you're saying? No, his nephew. His nephew, okay. Yes, his so. nephew was the founder, James Anderson Burns. I interesting, interesting. And do we know about his military service? Civil War. 14th Kentucky yeah. Cavalry. Yeah, well, we definitely uh, 
need to uh, honor his memory for sure. So we're going to go to the next grave, I guess, right? Okay. So Angela, where are we at now? This is the grave of Mr. Cash Sizemore, who is a son of John Fox Sizemore and Martha Burns Sizemore. Cash was the husband of my grandmother's sister, Myrtle Davidson Sizemore Bowling. Okay. He was actually murdered here in Clay County in July 1937. Wow, he was murdered. Why was he murdered? That was during the Great Depression, 1937. Yes. Family legend, family story has it that it was over a gambling bet about the weight of a pig. Pigs and gambling, right? Mm -hmm. we, we find that in so many mountain stories, you know. It's, you uh, do? Some back gambling or pigs or... Namely the Hatfields and McCoys, yeah. that was one of the... Or, or a woman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or all of three, you know, yes. kind of thing. But uh, so he was murdered. Now he, he actually, uh, he, he's a Sizemore. Who were the Sizemores? The Sizemores descend from George of Isle Sizemore and Agnes Shepherd Sizemore. DNA proven to be of Native American descent. Yeah, very well documented. Anybody yes. that knows a lot about it, or knows a little about uh, mountain genealogy mm -hmm. know the Sizemores yes. are connected to the Native Americans. And uh, here he is right here. So, yes. And uh, many Sizemores are right here in yes, this Yes, John this Fox, cemetery. his father and mother are next, the next graves next. up. John Fox. Okay, we got another, yeah. Was the son of Henry Hunting Shirt, Sizemore. So this is John Fox, the son of Henry Hunting, Hunting Shirt. Hunting Shirt, Hunting yeah. Hunting Shirt, yeah. Okay. And this is his wife's grave, Martha Burns Sizemore. I'm actually a distant cousin of Martha through the Burns. Born 1859. Mm -hmm. The Sizemore story too, you know, they were uh, supposedly Native American. There's a lot of controversy as to which tribe or tribes yes. plural. And after the, uh, you know, the Indian Removal Act, mm -hmm. a lot of them retreated to this area, to right? To the mountains, yeah. They retreated to the mountains to not be forcibly removed. Right. And here they are right now. They've moved, spread out all yes. over the, the tri-state tri, tri area. Many descendants you know, still in the area. Yes. Yeah, there, there's a few <laughs> descendants of these people around. Mm -hmm. I'd say... Uh, I mean, I must have ran into a thousand myself. Oh, yes. You know, they connect to the Sizemores yeah. in some way, shape, or form. But uh, definitely a well-documented uh, story. So is there anybody else that you'd like to show us here in the cemetery? Yes, Mr. Hiram Hoskins. He okay. was a Civil War veteran. All right, Angela. We're now in front of a grave of who? Hiram Hoskins. Harm. I guess I got something that how you say it up here is Harm? Mountain people, yeah. You know, yeah. it's an old mountain harm. name, a Harm. Yes. You know, I know a Harm. Yep. But uh, Hiram Hoskins. Uh, with the Company H, 24th yeah. Kentucky Infantry. So yeah, this is def another Civil War veteran. I know we had multiple uh, World War I, World mm -hmm. War II veterans, we had Korean War veterans. Yep. Uh, they're all right here. Mm -hmm. While I've got you here though, what do you think about all this? What is your opinion? Well, personally, I think there's so much real estate out there that I think they could have chose a different idea than to move, dislocate the cemetery. You know, we're, we're taught to let the dead rest in peace. That's definitely a contradiction because that's not letting the dead rest in peace. That's right, that's right. When you heard about this story, how did you feel? Well, it was, it was sad. It wasn't a peaceful feeling, a very sad feeling. Do you think that uh, we can stop it? I hope so, I hope so. I mean, you know, there's got to be there's got to be another way, yes, right? Yes, kind of yes. Thing like that. There has so, to be a, you know, and, a better idea somewhere. Right. I mean, you've got people that are here. Mm -hmm. uh, well, as a matter of fact, this is Hoskins, and this is Hoskins Cemetery right yes. here. So, uh, mm -hmm. I think there's people that are buried here for over a hundred years. Yes. Mahala Lewis, Mahala Hoskins Lewis, she was buried over there. Her grave. She was buried in 1893. 1893. Mm -hmm. How about that? She's the oldest known marked grave. 1893. 1893. And yeah, there's several different stones and things like any other yes. cemetery we find in mm -hmm. Appalachia, but, but uh, 1893. And how many people are actually buried here? That I have photographed that I know 78. And you have photographed the, each gravestone yes, that's here each and documented that. And uh, where can people find that? On Find a Grave. They're all on there you now. You put them on Find a Grave. Excellent. 
This is a great documentation. Yes. You know, God forbid that this does get removed. And I did put them on my social media, made it public that they are visible. Wonderful. And so uh, if you're looking for people that were buried here, we've got it documented here for you. Yes. And I feel like we've done a great thing with that too. Yes. So is there anything else you'd like to tell the people before we sign off? Oh, I think we've pretty well covered everything. Let's walk over here real quick. I wanted to pan over to this real fast. So right here at the entrance to the cemetery is the football field. What is that, the high school That's right the there? high school, yeah. So you got to climb up this mountain to get here and things. So it looks to me like there might be some other spots mm -hmm. that they could remove, right? I'm sure there is in the local area. Yeah. But uh, it is challenging here, you know, with the hills. There's limited space and right. things, but surely we can find another spot. Yes. Well, Angela, thank you so much for being here in this video about this important quest that your family and distant members of your family is fighting right now. Yes. Thank you, sir, for all your help. Yes, ma'am, absolutely. All right, so let's get back to the story. With all this sacred history here, how can we allow this to happen? To many of us, visiting the graves of our ancestors is spiritual. And those of us in the genealogy world have a passion to preserve their memories so that they don't become forgotten forever. We owe it to them. What is your opinion about this crazy situation? Comment below and let us know what you think. Are you outraged that this is even being considered? Or do you think it's not really a big deal? But what can we do? Several of the family members have hired an attorney and they are currently involved in trying to stop this move. But the family does not want to put all their eggs in one basket. And they hope they can get as many eyes as possible on the situation all over the nation. Do you have any ideas on how we can stop this? You can contact us directly at Family Tree Nuts. We'd like to thank you in advance for any input that you might have. As we close, we will scroll through the names of every soul that is buried here on top of this hill. They or their family chose for them to have this as their final resting place right here on the side of this hill. Let's help their wishes to remain honored. And remember, family tree nuts, let our nuts find the nuts in your family tree.